So in the build uh, your portfolio, the first uh, thing that we're looking for mm -hmm. is uh, the design of the page itself. Mm -hmm. And so we want the DOM tree to correctly represent mm -hmm. uh, the page content elements that we want to see use of semantic tags mm -hmm. uh, wherever appropriate and that there's a grid uh, layout. based layout mm -hmm. used in your mock-up. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would start with the first part of this which says the DOM tree correctly represents mm -hmm. the provided um, oops, sorry, provided uh, page DOM tree represents the page content. Mm -hmm. So what is a DOM tree, Purnima? So it's essentially a document object model is nothing but um, it's an in-memory representation mm -hmm. of your HTML uh, page provided to you. Um, so what it is is it's like a tree structure and it arranges all these HTML elements hierarchically. Um, so that's what it's doing. and. Um, I could actually show you guys That's how you can idea. represent um, a DOM tree. Um, so go. if you see, I have a very basic HTML document, um, a HTML document that has a head, and the head has a title followed by the body, um, which has nothing essentially for now, and then um, I close the HTML tag. So how do I represent this um, code in in the form of a tree. So what you do is you have the root followed by the parents and the siblings and its child. So the HTML is the root element in the DOM tree, followed by two siblings, um, so two ch children, sorry, uh, which is the head and the body. So these are essentially siblings. The head and the body are mm -hmm. siblings. They are the child of the HTML element and then followed by the head has another child, which is the title. Mm -hmm. um, and then the title it has a string that is the leaf. The title of the page. Yeah, the title of the page. And then the body just has um, um, a string content, which is the body. Um, so as you can see, this is how the DOM tree is formed. So however, if you represent your page, if you code in your HTML document and then draw, make a DOM tree out of it, it should, both of them should make sense. So you yes. should be able to map the DOM tree to a HTML document mm -hmm. and then map the HTML document to the to DOM, a DOM tree. tree. Um, so we need that to be appropriate. That's what we mean mm -hmm. um, by the first part. Um, mm -hmm. Moving on to the next part. Uh, it says page elements use semantic tags mm -hmm. where appropriate mm -hmm. and this also gets covered a little bit in your um, in the associated class that's right but mm -hmm. um, definitely look up semantic tags what are semantic tags what are non semantic tags mm -hmm. uh, and have a you know equal like a healthy mix of both mm -hmm. um, definitely wherever required if you feel like you you need to make use of semantic tags go ahead and do it and non semantic tags are um, just div and spans. yeah so um, some things um, so your div is just creating an invisible box around the content mm -hmm. that you put inside your div um, so that goes as a non semantic element um, whereas your header footer um, your articles all of figure, them are finger caption yeah because um, they they act exactly represent what element you are going to be putting into your file so those are semantic tags so, so uh, p tag just might tell mm -hmm. you it's a paragraph mm -hmm. but say you're adding a caption to your figure mm -hmm. you would want to have a fig caption mm -hmm. tag which semantics it's adding meaning yeah. to mm -hmm. what it what you are yeah, writing and, and it by makes it easier for human eye to read. Exactly, and it's it's only wherever appropriate. It's not where we ask you to completely <laughs> code your page with semantic tags. Yep. we do need um, an equal mix, a, a very like it's something that mix, yeah, so. something that is appropriate for your HTML page. So yeah, okay. mm -hmm. um, and the design uses grid based layout principles mm -hmm. and this again can be a grid that you build up. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily have to use Bootstrap, although using Bootstrap is going to make your life it's so much easier. Very convenient, yeah. Um, and you'll learn more about frameworks as you go through the nano degree, mm -hmm. but they are just, most of the time, it's just make your life easier. So. <laughs> That's true. Um, but if you do want to get practice at just coding up your own grid layout, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. 
you. Um, we also check for responsiveness uh, with the Build a Portfolio uh, website. And by responsive, we just what responsiveness stands for is being able to view your your page in a usable manner mm -hmm. on different types of devices. The ones we check for is a small screen device in the form of a Google Nexus 5. Um, a tablet, we check it on an iPad, mm -hmm. and a general laptop. So there, and again, you want to add tags and appropriate uh, width at which you want to change the layout mm -hmm. of your pages in um, in your project. But a very easy way to visualize what things would look like is mm -hmm. by using developer tools mm -hmm. uh, on your Google Chrome. And yeah. the way to access, and we're going to share Purnima's screen now, mm -hmm. I guess, just to yeah, I just, open is yeah. absolutely fine. So I have my rubric open right now, and um, <laughs> let's check out Udacity's responsiveness. Um, so, so you want to go to that hamburger bar? Yeah, and then what I do is I go to More Tools and click on Developer Tools. Um, it's taking a while, but it's there. So if you instead instead of using a mouse, want to use your keyboard mm -hmm. on a Mac on a Mac, you would go with Command Shift and I together, mm -hmm. and on a Windows or I believe even Control. on a Linux, you would go with Control Shift and I mm -hmm. together. Yeah, and then um, as you can see, you can see a lot of tabs opening up. Uh, whoops, uh, that shows a lot of code and console logs. But let's see. Okay, so uh, do you see this little cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> device, I'm going to click that. So what it does is it com it automatically changed, um, you mm -hmm. know, and the you screen size. And you might have to reload and, the page. Yeah, and as you can see, um, the device tab shows you all the devices that you can check your uh, web page with. So I'm going to check the Google Nexus 5. And then what I'm going to do is it's showing me an error that says um, you might have to reload your page. Yeah, you might need to reload your page for proper user agent. So I'm going to reload this page. Oops. Okay, and that's the way you're going to see it on a mobile. Yeah, and then um, I'm going to shift to an Apple iPad device and see how it is. Oh, I like this view better. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to reload it again um, just to see how it's rendering on an iPad. And yeah, this is how it looks on an iPad. So and it's as easy as this to actually yep. use. Um, the, the Google developer tools to actually view your responsiveness of your website. And I think all the developers, all the course developers, all of the coaches believe that start designing for smaller devices first. Yes. And then oh, go definitely. up um, to desktop, to, to tablets yeah. and desktops. Mm -hmm. So always think about smaller devices when you and are usability. you know coding in your web page. There are more things we check for, and the first of which is separation of concerns. Mm -hmm. And by that, we mean we want to check whether you have completely separated your style, which is CSS, from the structure or the HTML. And we, we want to do this, honestly, to just avoid confusion. Mm -hmm. you, you want to have that separation between mm -hmm. style and mm -hmm. structure. Um, and moving forward, you learn that it's an industry standard. You do that. Mm -hmm. So that's right. You want to add anything to that, Purnima? I think that was perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good enough. Uh, and it's very straightforward in the rubric. So it says uh, your structure is your HTML and your style is it's your CSS. CSS. So yeah, just make sure they are in different files and they don't get mixed. Mm -hmm. um, I know that. Um, there are a lot of ways to actually put in CSS inside your HTML just by adding your style Stand. tags or mm -hmm. your script tags for your JavaScript inside your head um, element. And that's not usually a be best practice because so you are reading CSS format code at the beginning and then you shift to you know HTML elements all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And it's just like to see it's not very pleasant, it's not very you know, properly organized. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we, we want you to separate it into different files. And always remember to have like a hierarchy in your directories that you create. So have a CSS directory where all your CSS files go. Right now, for this project, you might have only one CSS and one HTML file and no JavaScript files. But it's always 
always cleaner to see code which is properly structured. So you have CSS folders and CSS files go in there, JS folders, JS file go, files go in there, images folder where With your images, images go in, and then in your root directory you have only your index.html or whatever the HTML file you name it as. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the biggest chunk <laughs> of uh, both these projects is the code quality. That's right. And <laughs> what we check is whether the code passes uh, HTML and CSS validators and is formatted in a way mm -hmm. um, as stated by the Udacity HTML and CSS style guide. Mm -hmm. And we basically, the style guide was developed based on industry standards. Mm -hmm. So we want you to get started with good habits. Most of the rules on the style guide are pretty um, straightforward. Mm -hmm. There are some things which are very important and which you might not understand while getting started. Um, it's very difficult to detect those. Um, so I guess we would um, get started with telling them how to detect these sort of um, and mistakes in their code, and these are formatting mistakes, nothing logical, right? Your code might work fine, might render great on the web page because it's very smart. Web pages are very smart. They can, they like, can correct render a with typo. Mistakes. Yeah, they can render with mistakes. Like even if you don't close tags, or some sometimes they would render right, but there is um, a lot of things that are missing in your formatting style in um, that might be uncaught sometimes. And that's, um, I can understand that, that totally happens to all of us. And yeah. um, it's, these rules help us understand, you know, where we can do better in writing code. 